getting a sneak peek into the most anticipated games is a gamer's delight. We cherish any morsels of information about upcoming releases, whether those are leaks that Bioshock 4 will be open world or rumblings of The Last of Us factions, but sometimes the best way to get our blood pumping is with some good old fashioned gameplay. Except, maybe it isn't. Across the years there's been a growing distrust between developers and gamers as what we are shown and what we get can and often are two vastly different things. Whether it be a slip in graphical fidelity or a missing feature, us gamers have been burnt in the past to the point that many simply wait till the game is out to see what it is really like. Well after years of lies, deception or just lofty ambitions, along with the return of E3 this summer, we thought it was about time that we take a look at some of the best gaming reviews to discuss just how well their first impressions held up. Welcome to Retroactive Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Retroactive Reviews. I'm joined by Kyle. Hello Kyle. Hi yeah. Uh, so today we're going to be taking a trip to snowy New York. In front of us we have the 2013 E3 gameplay reveal of The Division which is pretty damn loud right now actually. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that licensed music in. <laughs> Do I use that Ubisoft budget? Uh, yeah, I, I know nothing about the Division 1 or 2. I remember watching this trailer probably because I was watching E3, but uh, yeah, mm. just never. The thing is, like, it does interest me slightly, but again, for me, it's one of those games like, can I convince a couple of my pals to play this? And probably mm. not. The, uh, for, for a little bit of context, this was kind of the boom of live service games when it was beginning to swell. You know, like Destiny was a few months away from release at the time, so it was like quite an exciting time for, for games especially in the multiplayer space because it was kind of seemed to be moving forward especially with the the next gen consoles were about to come out so i remember freaking out with this gameplay like i am a sucker for these kind of gameplay reviews yeah just like super cheesy scripted vertical <laughs> slices i love them um what? does that not also piss you off though when the game comes out when it is so scripted like when you know when no man's sky did it which obviously we'll get on to no man's sky in a future video when he was like this is not scripted and then it came out like a while later I was like yeah it was completely scripted that was not the game yeah so i mean i want to just quickly point out so i am a big fan i played quite a lot of the division one this year like the uh the map design that didn't make it into the game for one uh so like yeah for obviously these are vertical slices, so they are like, maybe this is what they intended, but budgeting schedules meant that it, it didn't happen, but yeah, this was quite a big uh, a big one for like, you know, players and developers not really trusting each other when it came to like, mm -hmm. what they're saying their game would be. Um, and obviously like they're doing the whole, the, the bros chatting to each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they love a, a couple of like some cheesy gamer bros, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think this is this is kind of just because I like playing games like this. This is kind of why I I enjoy them. You know, when it's kind of like you know you're taking things slow, you're trying to kind of role play in these roles. So underground for one, that was a, a later expansion in the game, not a main part of the actual game, which didn't come out till months after the release of of the Division One. And uh, I think the biggest thing was the graphical fidelity. Obviously, this is like looking really yeah, good. Probably like if, if this was revealed now, you'd still be like, "Damn, this looks really good." And this is now eight eight years old this year mm -hmm. since this came out. So how um, did it look? It, it it wasn't like a terrible looking game. The division does have some elements to it that actually do look pretty good. Um, I, I'd say some of the lighting when it came to nighttime, uh, because it's obviously it's got the snow and then you have like the leftover, uh, like Christmas scents because it's set like the six months after the post or like a year after the post apocalypse when uh, a kind of apocalypse. Mm -hmm. So it's like where it's, so you got still got like Christmas trees up and stuff like that. It's just giving me the look of it is giving me the exact same vibes as when the Watch Dogs trailer came out. It just it looks like it was on, you know, it, just the way it looks. But obviously that mm. the same fate of it didn't look anything like the trailer. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I that, guess from what I've seen, Division Two, this doesn't look too far away from what I'm used to. Yeah, it, I don't think gameplay wise, looking looking at. What we've got so far, I don't think gameplay wise we're looking at anything that was too different from the main experience. It's stuff like you know the shattered glass, and you uh -huh. did get the doors. <laughs> you could shut the doors as you <laughs> ran past them in the game, which is this is something that did not make it into the game. So right. this tablet is saying here, Chris the tablet. He <laughs> he is uh, 
a character playing the game through a different format, like so he'll be playing the game on the tablet version, right, okay. which isn't actually, you know, he'll not be seeing it as these guys are, it's, I think it was supposed to be a bit more of a kind of top down deal. Um, he, but Stuff like that is really cool now. on paper, like the idea is that all oh, your pal can get a tablet, but it's like, your pal would probably just play the fucking game mate. It's like, why would I want to sit on a tablet and give you support? And it is just because in my head I'm like, oh that's such a cool idea, it's like, but I would never use it. Yeah, I know, like, what, what is Chris, is Chris at work? <laughs> so he can't, he can't actually... He's trying to do it while actually... driving the car, he's got like one hand in the wheel just looking at his fucking hell man, they're gonna die. <laughs> Skiving in the office toilets. Yeah, like, he's, I just can't imagine, like, he's just like, where is it? Chris, we need you, step up. That, that would, oh, that would 100% be the, like, the advert for it. And then, like, the fucking office starts crumbling around them and it's, oh, God. Mm. Division 2014. <laughs> I think, um, there was a very... There was really big expectations for this game after this reveal. Because mm -hmm. I think we were still at the point where if you saw something revealed like this, you just kind of assumed that that was going to be what was coming out. Obviously, there are previous examples before 2013 where like it was mm -hmm. obviously amplified or like this is what it's going to look like and it looks nothing like it. But I think this was one of the big, the first big burns. Um, especially because this is something that's coming into live service, meaning it's like evolving as it goes along. So like, you know, we'll talk about Destiny in a future video, but like, you get elements that maybe didn't make it until like a year later or whatever. Yeah. Are, are Ubisoft just like the champions of this shit, like the fake yeah, trailer? I think I have a few examples for Ubisoft yeah. lined up. <laughs> yeah, it's, which is a shame. You I, it's weird. Like, is this false advertising? Probably. Mm. I mean, that. I think I, No Man's Sky will get into probably pretty good discussion about that because that's just the legacy that surrounded that, which I was probably a huge part and was interesting. But you know, it's, it's so strange because with movies, you don't really. You don't really get this. Um, mm. I mean, I guess, and sometimes you do because trailers are in a way to make you see the, the film. But mm. it's just something about games that you could upfront lie. I mean, look at like Peter Molyneux. <laughs> Remember they my? Just... Can we? Oh, can we watch a future video? Watch Milo on the Connect. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most <laughs> iconic moments all the time. This artificial intelligence that never came to be for the fucking Connect. <laughs> That, um, that there as well was another element yeah. where they just mentioned, oh, we should go over to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. You can't. Oh. <laughs> just, <laughs> I no, think, like, up, that, you can't. That, that, there's, there's, like, there's no bridge crossing in, in that game. They're making it out there like it is, but no, mm -hmm. that is not the case. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that online open world RPG. See, these are, like, the trigger mm -hmm. phrases when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, was it open I think world? a lot of people... It's, it, it, it is. It is, but it's it's it, it's kind of it's more open world than say something like Destiny because yeah. Destiny is like lots of smaller areas and there's not really much stuff in those areas. Whereas like the division, you can search. You know, you can be going into buildings, searching alleyways, finding all these things. Mm -hmm. And and what we saw there from that as well was they made quite a big deal about him finding that rifle. That is, they really. I don't know if I'm just remembering from what I know now about, like, say, The Division 2, but they really streamlined that in the sense that, like, it didn't make a big deal out of it. You're being thrown different weapons all the time. You have dozens of different guns constantly in your inventory, and it's just... It's that same kind of way where you're switching out... Uh, you're switching out the, for the stat numbers, you know, something with a higher damage or, like, I don't actually like snipers, but this is my most mm -hmm. powerful weapon right now. But, um... It, it was an exciting time, and I did like the division. Although I will admit, it wasn't as polished or as like cool as what as what we saw from there. But it did actually introduce a lot of cool elements when it came to multiplayer design. One of them uh, being the dark zone, which was, I think, a very very underrated multiplayer component, which they still have in, in the in the division too. But I just feel like it doesn't get talked about enough. And it was a like I just thought it was really really cool. Idea? Do you, do you know much about the Dark Zone? Generally, like nothing. <laughs> not at all. Like, what you're saying does sound like appealing to me, though. So I was wondering, like, do you think it is worth jumping into? Well, obviously not Division One. That'd be a bit redundant. But like Division for this two. late on, jumping into Division Two. So I Division Two, I didn't stick with quite as much as I did okay. Division One. I, I, I just just for no particular reason. Um, but 
any time I've gone back into it, because I always get the urges, you know, say like, right now I've watched this trailer, I actually probably will feel the urge to play The Division in a day or so. But The Division 2, I kind of struggled coming back into it. It's the same with all of these live service games where you come back in, you're like, what? What is this? Why is everything's completely different? What, what is this area that people are talking about and this new mechanic? I don't understand. So it, it can be a bit overwhelming like that. I don't think Destiny is quite as bad as that. But um, yeah, it's it, it, it's probably something worth checking out if you're into those kind of live service games. But uh, what, what did you, did, is this something that you would have been interested in at all? Uh, maybe at the time, well, did it come out in 2013? It came out in 2014 or 15. Probably. I, I mean, if, I think if me and a couple of friends bought it, probably would have been something I might have given a mm. shot. And stuck with a little bit, you know, like Avengers and stuff. I just don't know of the live service games for me. I, 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 when I played Destiny 2, I enjoyed playing it. And I was like, yeah, this is quite mm. fun. This is mechanically solid. And I just, I couldn't see myself going back to it. Even with No Man's Sky, which I played pretty heavily for about a month there. I, eventually I was like, yeah, yeah I just can't keep at these live service games i just i'm just yeah. more of a you know end to end maybe do a bit of trophy hunt and then move on to the next one well i say that. i play about 10 games at once but <laughs> yeah i just if i'm gonna play a game repeatedly it's just gonna be something competitive like i'm playing battlefront 2 right now or it's gonna be cod just and i, I mean mm-hmm. maybe there will be a game eventually that does grab me you know mm-hmm. i guess gt online is pretty much a live service at this point when you think about it so we could see mm-hmm where that heads but you know I, I'd be curious to which is not because there's always Division 2 free trials at least there were for a while you know they do like a free weekend mm. and I never mm-hmm. took it up so maybe the next one comes around the world I mean you can get the Division 2 for pretty cheap now if I if I like mm-hmm. quite a lot when it goes on sales it's down to like a tenner and, and, and if it, in that respect it's definitely worth it I'd say yeah but but uh, yeah th- thanks Kyle for joining me for the first episode of Retro Thank you. Reveals just gonna go downhill um, from here when we get to <laughs> games that maybe didn't turn out well at all yeah uh so make sure you give the video a like and while you're at it subscribe to the channel for more gaming content from us here at jump cut play including reviews let's plays and discussions on all things games we'll see you next time guys